The brilliant lights that illuminated the great city of Jerusalem were extinguished one by one as the Feast of Tabernacles came to an end. The week-long celebration recalled the brighter days of Israel's glorious past, when God himself led the nation with the fire of his presence. As things returned to normal, the people were reminded once again of the dark reality they now faced. They were a nation in darkness, ruled by strangers. Where was God? And when would the light of his glory return? The crowd grew quiet as Jesus stood to teach, but his first words left them stunned. I am the light of the world. Jesus continued, unaffected by the astonished crowd. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His claim was bold, backed by the authority of God himself. He was in the beginning. He was the true source of life and light that spoke the world into existence. And he was the light that shined into darkness, and darkness could not overcome it. I am the light of the world, he said. Adam and Eve once lived in a place where God's brilliant presence brought them daily joy, happiness, and perfect fellowship. There were no tears, no pain, no sickness, and no death, because it was a place where God lived and the light of his righteousness ruled. In the light of God's presence, Adam and Eve wanted for nothing. Their every need was fulfilled. Their every hunger was satisfied. This was true paradise. But Adam and Eve rebelled against God, and sin and darkness entered their perfect world. They were driven out of paradise, and for the first time, they experienced shame, hopelessness, anxiety, and the pain of being separated from the light, from the one who breathed them, loved them into existence. Sin entered their lives and plunged Adam and Eve into darkness. From this moment on, they would know pain, suffering, and death. The sin of Adam and Eve was passed down generation to generation. Selfishness, destruction, and despair ruled the hearts of all people. Sadly, the world became lost in sin darkness, and people, though they should have known better, chose to love the darkness rather than the light. With the light of God hidden, how could any be saved? But God in his mercy had a plan. He would enter into the dark kingdom to rescue all that was lost. The kingdom of God broke through the darkness and into humanity as a tiny baby. And the brightest star shone, heralding him as the Messiah. There in the night sky of Bethlehem, light pierced the darkness, and the darkness could not stop it. Wise men and lowly shepherds alike were drawn to this strange and wonderful sight, and what they found astonished them. God had entered the world in human flesh as a baby boy. The light of God and his salvation had finally come. This young child grew up, and when the time had come, he gave his life on a cross for the sins of the world. The light of the world was extinguished. But this was not the end of the story. Jesus rose from the dead in glory, and his resurrection proved that sin and death had been conquered once and for all. All that Adam and Eve had lost so long ago, Jesus had won back. Through faith in Jesus Christ, anyone can be forgiven of sin and saved out of spiritual darkness. Jesus, the light of the world, has made salvation possible for us all.